So I read a pretty alarming report recently that said up to 85% of men will experience some kind of hair loss at some point in their life, whether that be temporary or permanent. Now, a lot of these cases will be genetic caused by androgenic alopecia or the more common name pattern baldness, but there are other types of hair loss that can happen as well. They could be linked to stress, they could be linked to diet deficiencies, medication reactions, health conditions. So in this video, my goal is to give you a complete guide to keeping and regrowing thicker hair. And we're gonna cover everything in three parts. Part one of this video, we're gonna go over some foundational lifestyle habits that you can implement today. Part two, we're gonna talk about the well-established science, the pharmaceutical and over-the-counter interventions. And definitely stick around to the end because in part three, we're gonna go over some newer promising research for over-the-counter applications, some cutting edge stuff that's just starting to be implemented but has some promise. Here's what we won't cover. We're not gonna talk about hair transplants. Now this is obviously a very good solution and it has helped tons of men get their hair back, but it can be expensive and it's not always an option available at everyone's disposal. So I'd like this video to discuss options that are most widely available to everyone. And a quick disclaimer guys, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional and this video is not medical advice. I'm just a guy who loves researching this stuff. My advice to questions when I get DMs like, hey, am I balding? Is this hairline normal? My answer every single time is gonna be, please speak to a dermatologist about your specific situation, okay? By the end of this video, my hope is that you are aware of all of the options at your disposal. You can separate fact from fiction and ultimately help you not only to keep the hair you do have, but grow more hair faster and thicker than you ever have before. So part one, diet and lifestyle. We're gonna look at lifestyle solutions first because these can address many of the non-genetic causes of hair loss. So we're not talking about androgenic alopecia here. We're talking about things like telogen effluvium, stress-related hair loss, nutrient deficiencies, low iron, too much vitamin A, rapid weight loss. A lot of these are common causes of hair loss that is not linked to genetics. And a good place to start with lifestyle solutions is your diet. So really fast, I'm just gonna rattle off some nutrients that you should be consuming that nourishes your hair follicles in no particular order. Protein, iron, zinc, vitamin A, but not too much. Vitamin C, B vitamins like biotin, B12, vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, selenium. Now, I'm all for eating healthy, right? I even track what I eat in an app called Avatar Nutrition. I'm the crazy guy who weighs his food and measures my macronutrient intake. But the biggest issue I run into is that it's easy to track macronutrients, right? Like protein, carbs, fat, even fiber. It's also easy to track total caloric intake, but it's really hard to track your micronutrient intake. It's also just inconvenient, right? Even if you eat fruits and vegetables, how many exact milligrams of vitamin C or D was that, right? So was like just for my mental health, I'm not gonna get that granular with my tracking. And at some point, it just becomes a waste of time. Instead of trying to track each micronutrient, I focus on single ingredient whole foods, right? Using that as my source, eating complete sources of protein, making sure I hit at least 20 grams of fiber. If you shift your focus to more easily manageable things like this, chances are you're gonna hit the majority of your micronutrients as well. Even doing all of that can still leave you with gaps in your diet, especially on the days where you're in a rush, life gets in the way, you gotta pick up takeout, you gotta eat something processed from a box. It's impossible to have a perfect diet every day, every meal, forever. That's why I also take a multivitamin, right? Now, no one is a bigger skeptic of supplements than I am, and I do a lot of research before spending money on a supplement that I trust to ingest and put in my body. And the brand that I trust the most, who has also graciously agreed to be a sponsor of this video, is Ritual. And the main reason I take Ritual is because of their obsession with ingredient transparency. You can trace the decision-making process behind each of their ingredients from where they source their nutrients and why, the environmental impact. They literally put this on their website and they have a map and you can trace it around the world and follow to the exact manufacturer that this ingredient was sourced from. And they are 100% transparent about it. The supplement that I take from Ritual is the Essential for Men. It contains 10 high quality nutrients. It contains vitamin A, D, omega-3, B12, and zinc. 
and these cover quite a bit of the gaps that I might leave even eating a healthy diet. There are zero shady additives or fillers and their capsules are delayed release, meaning it's okay to take on an empty stomach. They also keep mint tabs in every bottle to keep your vitamins fresh and you can get these 10 high quality nutrients delivered straight to your door every single month for no strings attached and no hidden fees, right? They don't just offer vitamins either, they also have protein and they also launched a gut health supplement with their symbiotic range. So if you're like me, you have no interest in tracking micronutrient intake, but you wanna make sure you're filling those nutrient gaps with a trusted brand, definitely check out Ritual, the essential for men. And they're also offering a really big discount for all the people watching this video. They're giving you 30% off your first month. You can scan this QR code on the screen. So another reason that I supplement with a multivitamin is because I'm right now in a weight loss phase. I'm eating in a caloric deficit. In fact, over the last four months, I've lost about 15 pounds of fat. Now, when you're losing weight, you're most likely gonna have gaps in these micronutrients that you consume simply because you're eating less. And this is a really good segue into our next lifestyle-related hair loss, which is stress-related hair loss. If you're rapidly losing weight at an unsustainable rate, this can put metabolic stress on your body. This can lead to things like telogen effluvium, which is stress-induced shedding. Telogen effluvium is basically a catch-all diagnosis. It's stress-related hair loss, and it can be caused by a bunch of things. It can be caused by metabolic stress, hormonal changes, adverse reactions to medications, physical or mental trauma, in a normal growth cycle, on average, about 85 to 90% of your hair is in the antigen growth phase, while 10 to 15% is in the telogen phase, which is the resting and shedding phase. And healthy adults shed anywhere from 100 to 150 hairs per day. This is totally normal. Now, when stress-induced shedding kicks in, once the number of hairs shedding reaches about 25%, that's when telogen effluvium is diagnosed. And most of the time, it takes hairs in the telogen phase about three months to fall out. So if you're starting to notice rapid increase of shedding, then take a look at your life like three months prior and try to figure out maybe something happened in those three months that is the cause. And the good news about telogen effluvium is that it's easily reversible and you'll never lose more than half your hair, right? So by diagnosing the cause of it, it's really easy to find a solution. Let's move on to part two of this video. These are the most widely researched and most effective tools available to fight genetic hair loss. So now we're starting to talk about androgenic alopecia and pattern baldness. So if you've watched any videos on YouTube on genetic hair loss in the past, you're probably gonna be familiar with this section, right? Now, one of the most effective stacks that you can use to fight androgenic alopecia is the Dermapen and Minoxidil combo. Now, Minoxidil is a potassium channel blocker, which leads to new hair growth by causing vasodilation of the scalp blood vessels. Now, you're gonna to wanna to look for a three to 5% topical Minoxidil. Now, topical Minoxidil also shortens the telogen phases and forces resting hairs back into the antigen, back into that growth phase. And it also can cause a prolongation of the antigen phase and an increase in the follicle size, the dermal papilla size. Derma rollers work by causing micro injuries to the skin without significantly damaging the skin barrier, right? So your skin will respond by sending more blood flow to this punctured area, which can then reactivate those dormant hair follicles. Now there are countless studies on the effectiveness of minoxidil. There's also countless studies on the effectiveness of microneedling individually, but the magic happens when you combine the two. Now this 2013 randomized double-blinded study evaluated two groups, one with 5% minoxidil only and one with microneedling and 5% minoxidil. The microneedle along with minoxidil treated group was statistically superior to the minoxidil only treated group for promoting hair growth in men with androgenic alopecia. And this was over three primary efficacy measures of hair growth. I'll put some pictures up on the screen so you can see some of these results from the study. Now, one thing that I will say is that a derma pen is preferable to a derma roller. This is simply because of the angle you're poking holes in your scalp at. With a derma pen, you get more vertical, more accurate punctures into the follicle, whereas the derma roller, it tends to come in from an angle and sort of cause more of a tear at the follicle than a direct puncture. However, derma rollers are better than nothing. They're usually more affordable and they're usually easier to use. So using something 
is better than not doing anything, but a derma pen is more effective than a derma roller. And I'll link to some good derma pens in the description for you to go check out. I'll also link to some derma rollers if you wanna check those out as well. Uh, additionally, I will link to some great non-greasy 5% minoxidil solutions in the description as well. Of course, you also have other FDA approved androgenic alopecia treatments, things like finasteride and dutasteride. I'm not gonna get too deep into the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors since this is a pharmacologic intervention. You're gonna need a prescription from a doctor. Definitely chat with a doctor to see if getting on a minoxidil finasteride stack is the right thing for you to do. But if you don't wanna take finasteride or you're not sure if it's right for you, maybe you're a little weary getting into finasteride because there are a small percentage of men who take it and have unwanted side effects like low libido or erectile dysfunction, low sex drive. Definitely look at the Dermapen minoxidil combination. This is a great over-the-counter regimen to help fight genetic hair loss. One more thing I'm gonna add about the microneedle, try and go for like a 0.5 to 1.5 like needle length. Any less than that is probably not gonna be as effective. Uh, of course, minoxidil is not without side effects either. There have been reports of heart palpitations, arrhythmias, things like that in a small number of men. They're rare, but they are more common in oral form rather than topical because topical is localized. You do just wanna make sure that you're not putting minoxidil on on the days that you derma roll. There are other you know, well-studied, albeit less effective hair restoration treatments. One other one is low-level laser therapy, which is basically red light helmets. Now, some studies have suggested a 40% efficacy, but many are you know, still inconclusive. So if you wanna just add something to your regimen, then low level laser therapy could be a great non-invasive side effect free option. Let's move on to part three of this video. This is the part I really had a lot of fun studying. This is going to be some promising research. I'm not going to say the science is settled on any of this. There definitely needs to be a lot more time that passes to see if these are actually effective. But here are some over-the-counter topical applications with virtually no side effects that do show some early promise. Key, keyword, early. <laughs> now, before getting overly excited and at the risk of me overhyping things, these are definitely still in the research phase. Most of the studies have a pretty small number of participants, but nonetheless, the early research is promising. So let's jump into it. I'll try not to get overhyped about this because I don't want to come off as hyperbolic. So the two big ingredients I looked at were peptides and plant stem cells specifically. Uh, let's start with peptides. Now, peptides are already a staple ingredient in skincare. They're in pretty much every skincare brand's formula now, and for good reason, they work. They're great at producing collagen. Now, for hair loss specifically, they're starting to discover that they could work very similarly to minoxidil in several ways. First way is that they help stimulate those dormant hair follicles, the dermapapilla cell. They do help kickstart the antigen phase. They also act as vasodilators, similar to minoxidil, which helps ensure that the follicles receive more nutrients, more oxygen, and kickstarting that into the antigen phase again, which is essential for hair growth. One benefit that they also have is they're antioxidative. So some peptides can protect the hair from oxidative stress, which can damage the follicles and cause it to go into that shedding phase early. It's important to note that this effectiveness may vary depending on the specific peptide used. But I did find a study, now again, an early study, it is a randomized triple-blinded placebo study, but it tested acetyl tetrapeptide 3 against a topical minoxidil 3% solution. So the conclusions of this study found that there was pretty much identical efficacy using a 3% minoxidil solution with the acetyl tetrapeptide 3 solution. This study did also mention at the end that more studies with larger groups and a longer follow-up period is recommended, but it does show some early promise. Now, other peptides that have also shown early promise are biomimetic peptides. Now, the term biomimetic basically refers to the imitation of natural biologic processes and structures. So these are synthetic or naturally occurring peptides that mimic 
the function of the structures, hence biomimetic, of naturally occurring peptides found in the human body. Some early studies are showing efficacy in kickstarting the antigen growth phase in people with telogen effluvium. So this 2018 study in the Journal of Applied Pharmaceutical Science showed that biomimetic peptides impact the growth factor expressions on the hair follicles in patients with telogen effluvia. And these data indicate that the application of biomimetic peptides in patients who are dealing with stress-related hair loss led to a decrease of the telogen phase and a prolongation of the antigen phase. So it kick-started that antigen phase up earlier. This also shows similarity to minoxidil in terms of how it functions of kick-starting that antigen phase a little bit earlier. Now, there are some brands that are already starting to adopt peptides into scalp serums. So one specifically that I know of that is reviewed really positively and rated really highly is the Divi Hair Serum. This has acetyl tetrapeptide 3 in it. Additionally, it also has copper tetrapeptide 1. Now copper peptides are a biomimetic peptide. So these fall into that category. The Divi Serum also has caffeine, uh, which is a natural DHT blocker, as well as amino acids to help nourish the follicle once those peptides kickstart that antigen phase again. So additionally, these peptides are also showing some promise in beard growth as an alternative to minoxidil to help fill in beard patches. And in fact, yours truly may or may not be working on developing a product. And um, that's all I'm gonna say for now. Plant stem cells, there are other studies I read on those. I don't wanna go into all of them. This video is gonna run forever. Some of the other ingredients I looked at, I'm a little less excited about these, but some promise. Two of them are pea sprout extract, which is Pisum sativum. Another one is Capilia longa, which is a form of Curcuma longa, which is a byproduct of turmeric. And both had quote unquote positive studies as well. Again, the amount of participants in these studies is so low, it does warrant future research. The plant stem cells one may be a tad overhyped in my opinion. I see a lot of brands are hopping on the plant stem cell train rather than the peptide train. And I'm not 100% confident that that's the end all be all solution. I hope this video was helpful. This is meant to be an ultimate guide to getting your hair back, growing your hair thicker, regrowing hair you've lost or keeping hair that you think you might be losing. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think about any of these and I will see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to check out Ritual Trav White 30 for 30% off. Peace.